Hi everybody and welcome back to What's Occurring, uh, episode five. Um, as you can probably see, I've I've got um, um, I've got Julian John from Delcion um, who's sitting opposite me today. Um, but what I haven't got is my is my uh, my wing commander, my my comrade in arms, Jackie Turner, who's uh, who's feeling a little bit under the weather today. So um, uh, with Jackie's insistence, um, and when Jackie tells you to do something, um, emotional intelligence um, makes you do it. <laughs> um, and we we've, we've come dressed um, in matching shirts as well, Joe. So I'm in pink. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, pretty in pink, the pair of pretty us. Pretty in pink, but yeah. So for, for those of you that, that aren't familiar with uh, what's occurring, it's, um, it's a bit of a play on, uh, on the Welshism of, of, uh, of a well-known TV programme. Um, and what Jackie and I have been doing over the last uh, uh, four or five weeks is, um, is having conversations amongst ourselves about relevant topics that, that fit our needs, uh, that fit our business needs um, in terms of the commercial uh, requirements of people working with each other commercial requirements in terms of training, development, coaching and mentoring, etc. Um, Jackie and I have spoken already on a on a one-to-one -one basis in terms of things like emotional intelligence, finance, financial management, which are things that uh, her and I and our businesses sort of promote uh, amongst other things. And over the next coming weeks, we'll be um, we'll be adding more topics and more um, more discussions around topical conversations and maybe even just current affairs where we just bounce bounce uh, ideas off and where we see um, where we see some improvements that we can we can add and maybe this, the, you know there could be some core topics um, but what we're also going to be doing is adding and bringing in uh, special guests on occasion so without any further ado I'm going to put my glasses on now so I can see um, I'm going to introduce Julian John who's a who's a who also a well she's a bit of a he's a he's a tough down west um, and he uh, owns Delcion. So, Joe, over to you, bud. Give us a bit of background to yourself and, and Delcion for those who, who aren't familiar. Right. So, um, as I said, got, I, I run Delcion. We're a people and development consultancy. Um, I'm a Cardiff boy, as you said, living in, in Swansea. Um, so, so, Wales is a, a very key part of, uh, of what we do and also our plans. So, we're a people development consultancy, um, learning development. Um, our big focus, though, um, sits around diversity and inclusion. We go into organisations, support them around getting the strategy together, how you embed a culture and people change to be more inclusive. So that's us in a nutshell. That's great. Quite a topical, um, uh, quite a topical subject at the moment, I'm guessing. Um, how have you found the last couple of last couple of months? Obviously, with being uh, with with COVID in place, how have you found that uh, how companies have adapted and your existing clients? Um, what sort of you know what sort of um, what sort of changes, what sort of adaptions, what sort of adoptions? I mean, I, I, I tend to be using that quite a lot at the moment. I, I, I posted the last couple of LinkedIn up, um, LinkedIn posts, and I've used the word adapt and adopt. And I think that's such a timely, timely thing that, that, that's gone on. So what, how do you think things have gone? Yes, it's a like, really interesting time at, at, at the moment. Um, a lot of change that's going on. As you said, it's how people adapt and how people change. We know there's a, a, a push towards remote working. There's a place where technology sits within that and getting used to new systems. We've been spending quite a bit of time looking at organisational development and organisational design to say, right, well, what skill sets are now needed for people to work out of the office. Even when we start using the term remote working from a culture perspective, what does that mean? Does, does that have connotations of not being attached to the organisation? Does that mean, is there a reflection of being absent? It's not about that. So how do organisations capture that culture of being inclusive when people aren't sat in the desks and, 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 and the way that they traditionally worked? Um, but also, what new skill sets are required? And ongoing, what skill sets are going to be required? And, and if we then start looking at future, future times with regards to recruitment, are we including those new skill sets that may be needed um, within recruitment practices, within policies, in processes, within, within, in, in regards to employee engagement? Um, and then the big opportunities, as, as far as I see it, from an inclusion perspective, is mm. the workplaces have never been more accessible and more flexible. So what can that do from an inclusion point of view to widen the talent pool and widen the diversity that sits in organisations? But a key thing, and I, I, I threw something on, on LinkedIn at the very start of all this, is that we know that diverse and inclusive organisations perform better. Um, yeah. 
So if we look at, at where organisations are sitting now, it's the organisations that have been able to react quicker. It's the organisations that have been able to have that flexibility, have that creativity and have that approach to problem solving, which everyone needs at the moment. And time and time again, everything we do shows us that that's more inclusive organisations. So yeah. thinking about that, but, thinking about that work, but sorry, jump in there. Um, yeah, yeah. We've got a raft of questions and, and we're going to try and get, try and get through as many to get your, your responses to these because that, that's a really interesting one. With regard to work-based flexibility, and I don't, and I think, you know, lots of the posts that I've done around um, understanding change and understanding that, 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 that business mentality, that business uh, development, where we've moved from, um, we've moved from the office space where everything was, was essential, everything had to happen within the office space. And then all of a sudden, COVID kicked in and it, and, it, and it turned everything on its head. And the irony, I think, with, with the way we've adapted to change. But so what, what my question is, when you started this journey, you know, going back a few years ago, when you sort of, you went through some sort of tumultuous times yourself, you had some massive challenges uh, in, your, in your personal life, to, to, you know, that, and those aren't familiar. Um, where do you see the, the transition from then to now? Uh, Pre-COVID and during COVID, because you know my mind's eye. I think the way that you, the, the way people have adapted to change, I've never seen it so so um, so effective. I've never seen it so tran uh, you know transitionally where that level of acceptance, where people have gone from um, uh, you know being set in their ways by going to the office every single day, and all of a sudden they they they're now in a position where they can work from home um, because it's been forced on them. So where do, yeah. you see the, where do you see that transition from then to now? Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting aspect in the fact that some of the stuff we, we, again, going back to the stuff we do around inclusion, a lot of it is how you engage organisations and individuals within it. And the, the key thing is the strategic narrative around yeah. employee engagement, the strategic narrative that follows that. What we have at the moment is everyone gets the strategic narrative. Everyone gets throughout any organization will understand why they have to work remotely, will understand that the organization still has to do certain tasks. Yeah. So that for me is the catalyst to drive that being able to change so quickly. That for me is why that transition took place literally over three days within organizations because everyone knew they understood and understood the reason that's behind it. Then that, that's the, the key to it. But it's really interesting because when everyone's on the same page, when everyone knows what they got to do, everyone works in the same direction. And then you work out the bumps and the kinks as you go along. Completely. And um, it was an interesting, um, interesting thing you mentioned earlier about, and uh, lots of, lots of people have asked me and I've, and I've done a little bit of coaching with some, some some guys on furlough um and the transition from to maintain that inclusivity with with people on furlough that are working from that aren't working from home rather that are situated at home um how have you how have you seen companies that have that have bridged that gap and from an inclusivity perspective um how have you seen them sort of you know what what things have they done um to maintain that because i know what it's been like i mean i, I quite, i've adapted this quite quite easily because lots of our coaching Lots of the stuff. I mean, I did a coaching session with the clients one at half past three. It was Australian based. So, although we've got uh, we've got clients all over the world now, and I'm finding that lots of companies. I mean, COVID aside, that inclusivity part of it is, I don't think, has ever been more prominent um, than working from home. Um, give an example: the guy I coached this morning, half past three, uh, three thirty a.m. He works for an American company, but he lives in Australia. But Ooh. they've got this policy now that has just appeared and they don't know where it's come from. That as long as you can do your job, it doesn't matter where you live in the world. So yeah. their, their HR functionality now and, and their recruitment functionality is now just gone global because as long as... So, but how can you maintain that inclusivity? What, what sort of things would a company need to do today? What's your opinion on it to start with? Oh, the other... <laughs> So question off, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, one of the things that we tend to focus on is line managers. Certainly around inclusion, diversity and inclusion is a subject. How do you create inclusive leaders to sit within that? And the truth is the better managers will always be more inclusive because they have more understanding of the individuals who sit within their teams. Yeah. And and for me, inclusion is a sense of belonging and treating people as individuals. Yeah, it can be as complicated as you want, but that's as simple as I as, yeah. as I like to make it. What we have now. Um, is, is a situation where you are in people's 
bedrooms, living rooms in their homes as a manager, trying to talk to them, communicate with them, whatever. And, and the first question which is always on everyone's lips is, how are you doing today? What's going on? Aside of what you supposedly work is and what we're here to talk about. So that's changed the entire paradigm of the, when you leave everything about you and behind you, when you walk through those office doors. It's a real, so, so managers on the whole, and it's, as I said, always got great managers anyway, have now taken that extra responsibility on themselves to just try and touch base with people's well-being because we know that the, the current situation and the impact it has on it and it's hard to do a, a zoom call or whatever it may be if there's something else that's going on in the household so it's 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 made us more what's the best to, way to say it in contact with, with, mm. with people as individuals and i think that is something we can't lose because we'll just just say just forget about it if everything springs back the way it was before will have missed a huge learning opportunity, in my view. I agree. Um, uh, Rishi Sunak, and, uh, oh, sorry, Jacob Rees-Mogg was, 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 was recently, well, he's been quite prominent in the news over the last couple of weeks, last couple of days, but he is now wanting that transition now to take everything back to the norm, the old norm, with, with, with government. Um, our company, my, you know, WJHC and, and some of the contracts that we've got, um, we've we've adapted, <clears throat> we've changed most of the stuff that we've got all our training. Um, I've got a virtual uh, channel, and I've also got the the the, the face to face stuff. You know, not looking to come away from the face to face, as most of your business is, as you know, um, as, is on a face to face basis. But being able to factor in things like Zoom, things like Teams, uh, WebEx, uh, Google Hangouts, Skype. Um, and I, uh, a, a, a customer said to me earlier now that we were looking to put the training in place for March uh, for a two-day plan for the local NHS trust in South Wales. Cool. Um, they had to pull a plug on it. Obviously, hospitals, um, the, the staff were getting uh, total work from home, etc. And Lexi came back to me uh, yesterday. She said, what is happening on it now? What, where can we take it? How do you think we can adapt and adopt these new changes and, and implement them in? And I, the first thing I said is, how many people are you going to want on there? And what are the opportunities existing? Yours? Well, what are your thoughts? And I just said, well, listen, if you've got access to Teams, whether it's people working from home on their own laptops, as long as they've got a laptop, as long as they've got a camera, you can connect with them. And I think, I think efficiency will, will go up. Uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think efficiency will go up with, with the way people are now going to want to work from home. Because training that I've done, people come onto the training maybe one day's training, half day's training, full of scepticism, oh, this isn't going to work. Then they come away from it thinking, quite enjoyed that. They've sat in their houses, they've got their own coffee, they've got access to everything. All right, there's things that we have to sort of implement and change. So um, in terms of challenges, what, what sort of challenges you see us facing now going forward with, with inclusivity? Because you mentioned the, the, one of my favourite words, which is paradigm shift. You mentioned that word earlier, you know, in terms of the patterns yeah. that we all follow. I, I, I think, I think the, the biggest challenges we, we face is that if we don't wreck it. So, so let's go back to Jacob Rees-Mogg. Um, oh, I, <laughs> ah, I was bouncing. I was absolutely furious when I saw that because that is an organisation which has looked at what their tasks were and has taken no concept with regards to the individual needs. There's someone, one of the MPs fainted, stood in the queue. There's yeah. people who, for carers' responsibilities, disability, shielding, couldn't come in and vote for a system that was already in place to allow them to do. So that is a barrier just for the barrier's sake. So I, anyway, so that, that, that's an aside, but that just shows you from an inclusion perspective, but from an efficiency, productivity, organisational, engagement perspective, all absolute cobblers. But, but there we go. Um, I think that the biggest thing for me, is, as I said last time, is that there's a whole new set of skills which are being used. There's a whole new skill set to doing this, to communicating. There's people who are working from home who are absolutely thriving, being able to have a better work-life balance, to be able to communicate. To, to be, look, productivity is about output. Absolutely. It's not about nine, it's not about five, it's about what people do. And my concern is that you've got two options. You embrace it, you learn from it, you take it forward, you recognise these new skill sets, or we go back, as I said, with a little spring and go back, and then we ignore it. And the skill sets we actually need, we don't look at. 
because we'll, we'll keep managing performance, looking at appraisals around what the traditional habits have been. And they don't work. You've got to break the mold to take yeah. things forward. You have to be an organization that will react, which will change and take, the be- and take all the best bits. And that, that said, huge opportunities. But on the other side, some organizations will fall foul because they'll just be desperate to get back to, to, to February. And sorry, February's gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Wallowie, and I'm, I'm, you know, bring in, bring in the, the comments from uh, Jacob rees mogg which, and I'm, and I'm probably with you, it infuriated me because I thought, what all you want is, is the status quo to come back. All you want is to go back yeah. to yesteryear, which, uh, you know, um, and, and th- th- that format has been around for so many hundreds of years. Um, and, uh, you know, what we look at as a, as a training organisation, as, as companies, you know, there's 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 huge ramifications around things like PESL, where people look at that uh, the political, the economical, the sociological, the technological, the legal, and the environmental. Um, you know, um, the the ethics side of things come into all that. And if we can, if we can, uh, you know, even things like carbon emission, if we can stop travelling, because I've got to be honest, my day. You know, you're working from home now, but I've seen lots of tweets and posts. And I see uh, the, you've got the stormtroopers and everything in your office. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I've seen that, you know, the, the office is ready and it's on his head down and, and, and let's get on with it type of thing. Um, and I've adapted um, a lot more to this type of working life balance. So I'm not stuck on the yeah. motorway. I'm not polluting the atmosphere. My car does about 30 miles a week now. And that's pretty much back and forth to Tesco's. I'm pretty much my house is about a, uh, about a mile as a crow flies that way. So, in in terms of um, what would you what 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 progress would you like to see? What things would you like to see if you want if you want a magic wand? Then, so we can sort of um, we can sort of look at um, at where we're at with this. What what would your magic wand be if June and John Delshawn, you know your your people and development, your inclusivity, your uh, your magic wand was there, and you could just say this is what I want, and this is to happen. What would it be, Ben? Oh, ah, I'm giving you a wish. You didn't think you, you didn't know what I was going to give you. I want, I want my hair back. That's one. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Yeah, buy one get one free. <laughs> no, I've still got a pot of air gel from 1987 up there. I'm desperate to get rid of it. Um, uh, so go back to again inclusion, diversity. I just want to stop putting labels on people. I just want to stop putting people in little boxes. I want people treated as individuals and organizations to understand that and the benefits that will bring. That's all I want with my little magic wand. But just to go back to the pestle piece that, that, that you spoke about as well. We, yeah. We've got our own version of pestles, exactly the same. We do it around inclusion, apart from the L, which stands for legal normally. We, 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 we talk about legacy. Oh, we right, talk yeah. about everything that's gone before. And that is what we said about Jacob rees mogg Parliament in a nutshell. We revert back to what we know because that's where our comfort factor is. Yeah. And some things you just got to reimagine, reinchange, and look out the best ways to do it. But can I keep my magic wand? I like my magic wand. You could keep that, but yeah, I've got mine. It just gives way. It's either that or my glasses. I'm making notes of this one, and then I've got to put these things on and be able to see what I've written. It's just bizarre. But yeah, okay, that's that's um, that's 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 an interesting one. And in terms of. Um, what we you know the changes that we that, that we can see going forward um is that recognition um and being able to recognize people as individuals and i'm, and I'm with you all the way in that and funny enough a, a cast um a potential client that i spoke to yesterday works in a flat company they've got two managing directors who, who own the company essentially yeah. they're, again they're a global company and these these guys are are so out there um but they have no titles and just to bring, I mean, there's, there's always there's always a rugby uh, rugbyism or a Welshism that I have a tendency to throw in, <laughs> but you know we look at we look at how we can create these teams, and one of the one of the greatest teams that I think I've I've ever come across is is the New Zealand rugby team, and uh, I've been a massive massive passionate rugby fan. You know, lots of things that are on that are on YouTube at the moment. Um, lots of things that are on Amazon, actually not Netflix. Um, Chasing Great by Richie McCall, which if anybody hasn't seen it, it's, it's immense. Um, certainly from a from a, a motivational perspective, and, and look at some of the some of the some of the things that he does every single day. Gets up in the morning and does it again, start again. You know what happened yesterday? He's forgotten a little bit, like you said. 
you know, what happened in February, we can't know much about, we don't need to worry about what happened in February. If we go back to it, then we've gone backwards in things. And I'm with you on that. Then you've got Dan Carter then, he talks about um, the perfect 10 and about what he does in terms of his his flow, in terms of his, his routines and, and there's always that marginal gain. So in, if, if we could then learn anything from those, the irony of what we just said in terms of not labelling everybody, kids in New Zealand, when they start playing rugby, they aren't given numbers. Everybody wants to be Dan Carter, yeah? Lots of kids now want to be Richie McCaw, but everybody, when I was in school, wanted to be the number 10, the, the outside half, because Phil Bennett was the Welsh outside half at the time, before Jonathan Davis sort of took it, um, took the mantle over and ran into the 80s and 90s with it. Um, so, yeah, so how do you think we can get there? You know, in terms of, you know, your magic wand, how do you think we can get there with with not having any any titles in place and w- just quickly sort of summarize this now and sort of bring this to to a to a to a head? What do you think companies can do to eradicate titles in there? Just have a stronger purpose. Don't know. That's all it takes. If an organisation has a clear understanding of what it wants to do and everyone's in it understands how they can achieve it. Uh, Elon Musk did it with Tesla. He just stripped out all the middle level of communication and just said we've got a problem we need this solved it's going to slow it down by going through certain levels and th- yeah. different areas of bureaucracy and different titles just come directly to wherever you need to speak to to get it done so a little bit and, stripping out bring more communication transparency yeah absolutely yeah but the key thing that sits behind it is ensure that everyone in the organizations knows what they are working towards and what they're empowered to do and empower them more to be able to achieve it that's the can go back to this i keep on talking about strategic narrative strategic narrative only because i've seen how effective it is in organizations what everyone is pulling in the in in the right direction yeah so yeah. that that's that's the key thing no, i'm with you on that i'm with you on that well um joe listen thanks very much for your time bud um, Always a pleasure. <laughs> loving the shirt, <laughs> loving the office. But no, seriously, on a on a serious note, I mean, there's some there's some there's been some really really interesting points that have come from that, um, and you know, lots of lots of people will be looking at this and wondering, um, you know, wondering where where our backgrounds in terms of what we, what I do as a girl, I mean, but certainly what you do as a from a, from from Delshon's perspective, you can see if you turn your your. You know, if you turn your chair ever so slightly so we can see the butter that you're there we are you can see it in the background um so if anybody wants to check out julian's julian's organization company guys it is del sean julian is prominent on twitter uh, yep. and linkedin and, and that's got a really 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 cool website um and gives a, a huge array of of um of of everything that uh, del sean does as an organization so julian listen but thanks very very much for your time today um, it's That's been an absolute right. pleasure as well, eh, to catch up. Um, but certainly, <laughs> obviously, to have the have the conversation. And then, um, yeah, it's a shame Jackie couldn't be with us today. But uh, the dancing queen is definitely back. Well, I'm hoping <laughs> she's gonna, she's well enough to be back tomorrow. And then we've got a. I believe she's doing a. Um, uh, she's doing some dancing on Friday. Um, to, and the song I believe is a Dire Straits number this week. So um, everybody on LinkedIn, just keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but Julian um, and everybody, thank you very much for today, guys. And we will see you next week. Um, and I think it's there's no no guest next week. It's the week after. But um, yeah, take care and see you soon.